Welcome to our lecture online. We're now ready to start to finish, not start, but finish the problem we started on the previous video, where we had a second order circuit and an operational amplifier within the circuit. We ended up getting to the point where we had the transient equation of the output voltage in terms of a cosine 2t plus b sine, t, sine of 2t e to the minus t. Now realizing, of course, that when time goes to a very long period, when, when a lot of time has gone by, we know that the output voltage will be equal to the source voltage, will be equal to 10 millivolts. So to get the voltage equation as a function of time, and I guess I probably want to put as a function of time like this, so we add the 10 millivolts as the uh, steady state voltage across uh, of the output voltage. Now, we still need to determine what A and B is equal to. So we go back and realize that before time goes to zero, the source is zero and the current from the source is equal to zero. When time is past zero, in other words, when we just turn down the source, at that point, not enough time has gone by in order to change the current output, so the current output will be, will be zero, and if the current output is zero, then V1 and the output voltage must be zero as well. In addition to that, we realize that the derivative of the output voltage with respect to time when time is equal to zero can be calculated from using this equation right here. So the derivative with respect to time of the output voltage is the difference of V1 minus V0, or, or the output voltage, divided by R2 times C1 by bringing the C1 down here. And so that's what we have over here. And since these two are still zero at that time, then we know that the derivative of the output voltage will also be zero. All right, now we're ready to calculate A and B. So we can say that the output voltage as a function of time when time is equal to zero, so let's go ahead and put a zero in here, that's going to be equal to, when this is zero, we get A, plus B when this is zero, we don't get anything at all, and that means uh, plus 10 millivolts. And I put down the units millivolts so we don't get confused, that's not equal to volts, and we know that this, this is equal to zero, which means that A is equal to minus 10 millivolts. So now when we take the derivative of that, which is, takes a little bit of work, but we could do that, so it will be the first, so we could say that dv dt of the output voltage is equal to the first, which is a times the cosine of 2t plus b times the sine of 2t times the derivative of the second, which is minus 1 times e to the minus t plus the second e to the minus t times the derivative of the first. The derivative of cosine is a negative sign, so it's minus 2a times the sine of 2t. And the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we get plus 2b times the cosine of 2t. And notice that the derivative of the constant goes to zero. Now, when we set it equal to zero, when time is equal to zero, so you know that the sine disappears. So we simply have a times the negative 1, so minus, minus a. So we have this goes to 0, this goes to 1, minus 1 times a is minus a, the cosine of 2t goes to, goes to 1. And then here, that this goes to 0, this goes to 1, and we have plus 2b. And that's right, capital B. Capital B, plus 2b. And that equals 0, because that came from here. All right, we know that A is uh, minus 10, and so when we bring that across, we have 2B is equal to A, which is equal to minus 10 millivolts. That means that B is equal to minus 5 millivolts. All right, now we're ready to plug that into the equation. And so now we can say that the voltage, the output voltage as a function of time, is equal to A, which is minus 10 times the cosine of 2t, plus B, which is a minus 5, times the sine of 2t, all multiplied times e to the minus t, and then we still have the steady state of 10 millivolts. And let's go ahead and put it like this. So we know that the millivolts applies to every number in there. And so that is how you find the output voltage as a function of time. So here we go from 0 to 10 millivolts using this equation right here. And that is how it's done.
<laughs> That's a long problem, isn't it? Let's see if I did it right. Sure looks like it. That's it. That's the answer. All right. 